Good afternoon, anyhow. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, dear chair, ladies, <laughs> welcome. Um, there, we there we are. <laughs> Finally, everything gets started. Almost all patients with uh, pancreatic cancer have metastatic disease at the time of diagnosis. And when people hear they need pancreatic surgery, it's always a nightmare. A nightmare, but with advancing technology and surgical techniques, like minimally invasive surgery and robotics, maybe we might be able, with improving surgical accuracy and reducing surgical trauma, to improve significantly clinical outcomes and maybe also long-term survival of patients being operated on pancreatic cancer. Even in expert centers, pancreatic surgery has a mortality rate of about 3%, overall complications in one in two patients, with almost 20% of them being severe complications, the most common complications after pancreatic surgery are the occurrence of pancreatic fistula, which is a, a um, incomplete or inaccurate repair of the pancreatic remnant after resection, hemorrhage, or delayed gastric emptying. Patients having pancreatic fistula after pancreatic resection they have a significantly increased risk of mortality, four times higher risk of, being, of getting death after surgery. So any measure that could prevent the occurrence of, pan of uh, pancreatic fistula would help. Almost all metastatic patients with pancreatic cancer and even resectable ones who are not offered surgery, even in early stages, will die within three years after diagnosis, whatever treatment modality has been applied. Patients eligible for surgical resection and gut surgery with a curative intent, they might benefit from a five-year survival of based on the stage between 20 to 40% at five years. That makes surgery today, at least, the only option with curative intent. Pancreatic cancer is the seventh killer today, globally. But calculations show that we have to expect that Pancreatic cancer will become the second cancer killer within a decade, especially in the US. Thus, the role of potentially curative pancreatic surgery will become even more prominent in the future than it is today. Which type of pancreatic surgical procedures can we do? Most of them are for pancreatic head or periampillary neoplasms because these patients most of the time present with obstructive jaundice. For tumors of the body or the tail, a distal pancreatectomy can be needed. And very occasionally, a total pancreatectomy can be performed. In pancreatic cancer, as most patients present with metastatic disease, only 10% have a localized disease without metastasis. These patients are candidates for potentially curative surgery, but also locally advanced borderline resectable pancreatic cancer might be an indication for pancreatic resection with curative intent. So only about a fifth of all patients with pancreatic cancer 
are potential candidates for surgery. Although complete tumor removal provides best long-term survival, reaching up to about 40% five-year survival, the topographical anatomy of the pancreas, which is surrounded by major blood vessels and due to the perineural invasion of the cancer, doesn't allow always an R0 resection. Even more, majority of the patients will not have a complete tumor removal at the time of surgery. This recent paper coming from Heidelberg in Germany showing the outcome in about 600 patients operated on with a curative intent show that in more than one in two patients, an incomplete tumor removal has been obtained. Even there, patients might benefit of a survival of up to 40% in an R0, but in case an R1 resection has been performed, a survival rate of up to 20%. Thus, the surgical margins really do matter, but what also matters is that patients got their adjuvant chemotherapy. So in order to obtain an R0 resection and increase the chances of, being, of having a long-term survival, more and more surgeons are performing synchronous venous resections, particularly in borderline resectable disease. The outcome of these surgeries is similar to, the, to those of patients without venous resection, especially in expat centers. However, taking into consideration the variations in the definition of borderline resectable pancreatic cancer, synchronous venous resection seems to be justified only if an R0 resection can be achieved and when there is no direct invasion of the vein. Because once direct invasion of the vein has occurred, distant metastasis will soon follow. But unfortunately, most of the times, direct invasion of the resected vein is extremely hard to assess accurately before resection or even after being resected because they got most of the times neoadjuvant systemic radio and or chemotherapy. 10,000 hours of practice would make anybody an expert. Yes, indeed. The fact is, the more you practice, the more experienced you'll become. And for pancreatic cancer, surgical expertise means lower operative mortality, higher complete tumor removal and R0 resection, and better five-year survival rates. But nevertheless, many pancreatic resections are still performed in less experienced, low-volume centers with high mortality rates. All effective measures to prevent the occurrence of pancreatic fistula are welcome, and they are under investigation. Today, to reconstruct the pancreatic remnant after resection, the standard is a pancreatic jejunostomy. But there's a strong evidence that pancreatic gastrostomy, where the pancreatic remnant is sutured to the stomach, in experienced hands can be superior to pancreatic jejunostomy to reduce the fistula rate. This multicenter, the largest one published yet, uh, study showed a significant, almost a threefold reduction of the pancreatic fistula rate after pancreatic gastrostomy as compared to pancreatic jejunostomy. But three years later, 
A German multi-center study showed that there is no difference at all. And the fistula rate in the pancreatic jejunostomy group was just like the, the study, previous study, 20 to 22%. But in the pancreatic gastrostomy study, the pancreatic fistula rate was 20%, whereas it was in the Belgian trial only 8%. This reflects very in intensively large differences in surgical expertise and pancreatic reconstruction techniques that are being used today, even in high volume centers. So subsequently, the Cochrane systematic review showed that after pancreatic gastrostomy, we can have a fistula rate of 13%, but in the pancreatic jejunostomy group, a fistula rate of about 20%. So the final conclusion today is there is no reconstruction preference after the resection of the pancreatic head. Since the inception of minimally invasive surgery, pancreatic surgery is increasingly performed via laparoscopic or robotic surgery. The early published series of minimally invasive surgery showed very high morbidity and severe complications, but acceptable mortality rates because of very stringent selection criteria. But when we look today at the outcome after minimally invasive surgery for pancreatic cancer in the US, where one in two minimally invasive procedures are performed in low volume centers, the mortality rates seem to be higher as compared to open surgery. Nevertheless, a recent systematic review showed, although the outcome might be comparable after minimally invasive or open surgery, published data are extremely biased, they are heterogeneous, and contain low volume samples. Unfortunately, there are no randomized controlled trials yet. Whereas in most centers, pancreatic jejunostomy is performed as the standard reconstruction, in our center we perform since about five years still the pancreatic gastrostomy reconstruction. We have optimized the technique, we have optimized the methodology to post-operative -op management and performed now in more than 200 patients and minimal invasive procedures. These are the early results and they reflect that the outcome in this type of resection and reconstruction, which is done in three-dimensional laparoscopic approach, is very promising. One, we had one dead in being up 2% in a patient without having a postoperative surgical complications, but she died from a sudden death because of cardiac amyloidosis and arrhythmia, which was not known before surgery. The fistula rate was reduced to 4%, such as hemorrhage to 4%, and severe complications in only 10% of the patients. We also had a, an extremely high R0 resection rate, but once again, this is a small sample size and need to be confirmed in multi-center studies. And most important of all, more than 90% of the patients with pancreatic cancer had because they had n less or no severe complications after surgery, could start their adjuvant systemic therapy within two months after surgery. There is only one day paper that touches or addresses the long-term survival after minimally invasive surgery for pancreatic cancer. That study comes from the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. 
and they show that thanks to the, uh, to the early start or, uh, of uh, the adjuvant systemic treatment after pancreatic resection for cancer, which has been obtained in 95% of the patients, that reflects that the majority of the patients are disease-free as compared to the open surgical resection group. And this shows a significant progression-free survival in the minimally invasive group as compared to the open surgical group. As the incidence of pancreatic cancer is increasing and there is no golden bullet expected to be discovered in the coming years, the role of surgery will grow. Minimally invasive pancreatic surgery in expert centers is able to reduce surgical trauma, to improve clinical outcome, and to start very soon after surgery with adjuvant anti-cancer treatment. But in pancreatic cancer, surgical advances, better patient selection and tumor staging can provide only a marginal improvement in long-term outcome. Major improvements in long-term outcome, though, will only come from directing treatment at specific targets on better understanding of the genetics and molecular biology of pancreatic cancer. I thank you all.